We got our first clutch of ball python eggs. All right, so there's gnats everywhere. It's killing me. Um, we got our first clutch of ball python eggs. And they're right here. The first clutch of ball python eggs did not come from the first girl I thought was gonna lay. It actually came from the second girl I thought was gonna lay. So the first girl is still holding on tight to those eggs. Both of those girls are actually due to lay on the 21st. Today is the 23rd. So one of them's late. The other ones, they were both late. One of them already laid. So now it's just a matter of time of waiting. Um, so this is a firehead tri-stripe. Let's get her out. See uh, how many eggs you gave us. And um, that's it. So let's do it. So what I like to do is grab a little something that's not like, you know, harmful or nothing. But I like to knock them on the head and kind of get them out of the funk or at least hold their head in place. That way I can grab the rest of their body. I don't want to get bit. Nobody wants to get bit. It doesn't really hurt, but I don't want to happen. So here we go. You want to uncoil them from the eggs. There we go. Now I'm going to put her aside put her in some uh, water just to kind of get her moist. The reason I wanted to put her in some water was because I don't know if you can see in here, but um, she had an explosion of shed and it came off in pieces. And uh, because of that, she also had stuck shed. And I just want to get that off as soon as possible. But I've been having wanted to like mess with her because she was due to lay. Um, so there's shed everywhere in here and she has shed stuck to her. So I figured I'd just leave it be and we call it a day. So typically you want to mark where the top of the eggs are. So I'll do that right now. So you want to know where the top of the eggs are as well as where the veins are. So I'm just going to put a dot for where the top of the egg is, where she laid it. So we have a total of five eggs here. And I'm gonna try to separate these eggs a little bit. And I'm gonna try to separate these eggs a little bit and put it in this container. And then we'll dump all this substrate out, put her on some fresh bedding. I'll probably put her on paper towels um, just until all that shed breaks off. So here we go. Let's see if we can separate these eggs. You want to be gentle with the egg separation. Sometimes they don't separate as easily as you think because they've been together for a long time. So you want to just kind of roll it around and see what happens. Then they might have been on too long. Let's see. Yeah, they definitely aren't rolling. All right, here we go. Separating. All right, these eggs are separated. These eggs are separated. Here's the black dot. Leave those where that is. You want to make sure you're rolling instead of tearing. You don't want to pull apart. You want to roll them apart. And you want to do it gently so they don't split. Because if you get snake, the snake eggs, once they're pulling apart like that, it's like glue. So you want to make sure they don't tear the other egg while you're, while you're ripping them apart. So here we go. So the easier and smoother you do it, the better. So we have five good eggs. I mean, these are perfect. One more separation to do. That's it. Five eggs from this first time layer. And now I'm gonna turn off the lights. 
and see where the veins are. Good, good. Good, good. All right, so this one I had to turn over to the side and this one was only slightly a little bit off to the side. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has, there's a lot of people that say, you know, it doesn't have to be upright because obviously if they do a maternal incubation, this, egg, like I said, I marked them at the top of the egg. So this egg would have been on its side if it was a maternal incubation, but, um, and this one would have been slightly off the side, but it's all right. I prefer them being all upright like that. And um, we're so now I'm going to put some smiley faces on them. Maybe a grumpy face on this one. I don't, man, hopefully this one don't come out mad because now he's going to be like, ah, oh, you gave me a little sad face. Uh, let's give that one a face like that. Um, that guy get a face like that. Hopefully y'all can see these faces. Check them, check them, check my master masterpieces here. And then this one here is going to get a surprise face. Oh, that's a terrible circle. He looks like Ronald McDonald over here. <laughs> All right. There you go. First clutch, get some smiley faces because why not? Now, put this clutch away. Get the snake cleaned up. Get the snake tub cleaned and uh i guess you guys might want to see that too right what i'm gonna do is this i'm gonna dump it out spray it off with water scrub it out make sure there's no scent in here i usually do dawn dish soap and use before i scrub it use the dawn dish soap to scrub it and then like i said i'm gonna put it on paper towels make sure those paper towels are nice and wet uh, because i'm trying to get those that stuck shed off so i'm gonna be probably doing that for a couple days the temperature here is getting back up to normal, but the problem is that the humidity is still very low. I think the humidity right now is 38, and I try to keep this room pretty moist. I have a bucket full of water just sprung open where I hope that it evaporates into the air, but I should probably put a humidifier in here. The only problem with that is the humidifier won't work for me because I keep the dragons and the snakes in the same room, so I can't really do that because the dragons aren't supposed to be in a humid conditions. Uh, versus the snakes are supposed to be, you know, over 40% um, humidity, and they usually like it below 40%. So um, hopefully with the changes I'm planning on making, I won't have that problem anymore. But for the time being, that's what I'm going to do. And then for her, after she's soaking in that water, which is like, it's also done dish soap with some water, uh, some warm water. And once she's done with that, I'll rub her down with a paper towel, make sure that scent is off of her. And um, maybe that'll also help a lot of that stuck shed come off as well. And uh, then I'll put her back in here with her paper towel and leave her be for a little bit. And um, because of that, because of everything you do, you should usually, I've had females eat the same day after they lay eggs. So essentially, if she doesn't smell the eggs, if she doesn't smell anything that has to do with eggs or breeding, she will eat. So I will try feeding her maybe today. It'll be a small meal. I don't want her first meal to be a big meal. It'll be a small meal. If not today, I'll try to feed her tomorrow. And if she doesn't take it, then I'll just wait till next Saturday to feed her because I usually feed on Saturdays. So with that said, if you made this far into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. As always, peace. Bliss.io